Um, maybe start with the, the roster move today and Leon Dreisaitl and, and what you thought of him, how close he was, and why the decision was made. Um, I thought he was really close. And what we told Leon this morning is that he did everything we asked him to do. Um, and I thought he played well on either wing. Um, <clears throat> I think his strength is down the middle. I thought his skating has improved from, I didn't see him a lot last year. I saw him a clone at the end and I saw him a little bit uh, after he was sent down. I thought his skating and conditioning has improved. Um, and uh, I was quite happy with him. What we told him was, is, and I don't know how much you heard, but it's, you know, you have to, you have to look at the big picture. We have to look at the big picture. Um, you had a good camp. You have played some people. There's no question there. Play ramps up. Things change. Dynamics of the game change as games progress into the regular season. We want you, when we call you up, we want you to stay here for, for good. So you got to work on the 200 foot game. Offensively, you can play in the NHL right now. You've got to work on the 200-foot game, the little stuff on the defensive side of the puck. Uh, whether it's at wing or at center, he'll predominantly play center down there. He now has an, an, another asset to his game because he can play both sides uh, on the wing. So tried to send him with a good message. He was upset. Um, but I think at the end of the day, he'll, he'll realize it was the right move when that day will be. I'm not sure. but. Um, yeah, so that was the thinking behind Leon. Um, really happy with the progress he made at camp. Um, he was very uh, inquisitive as to uh, a lot of the structure the coaches and staff has been putting in, which is good when a young player starts, you know, really diving into the structure. That's good. So it's, it's just a tough decision, and it went through the same process with Darnell. And these are two obviously important parts of our organization, and you know we want to make sure that. Uh, that their game is respectively smoothed out, so when they're up here, they're here for good. Well, I think he's just a little further ahead as a professional. Uh, he's had the, the years in the KHL. Um, he's uh, stronger. Uh, he's he, he is a natural winger. Um, so that, that that was a tough one, but you know he's he's he's. Just he's a little ahead that way. Like like so in a snapshot he might be a little bit ahead. In a in a photo album he might not be. So um, that's how that's my that's my analogy met slash metaphor for the day. <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> be easy on me. Salary cap a factor at all in that decision and uh, after the answer that one could you get in dive into the figure the situation with you? Uh, the salary cap was not. Um, there's obviously when you have a lot of players with with the performance bonuses that we have. There's a point when when your your bonuses creep in as overage. Uh, but we 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 were comfortable. We looked at rosters with and without. There's no no real issue there. <clears throat> um, and you, Andrew, yeah. It, what, what was the question on him? Well, just basically where you're at with him. I mean, we've heard rumors that. The yeah, um, I don't have anything to report on that. Um, uh, you'll probably hear something from Todd and myself. Uh, I don't know whether it's tomorrow or the next day. Um, he's been, you know, he's been Andrew Ference, like what I've known from him in Boston. I've seen him here. Um, he's, uh, you know, he's 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 not going to play the same role on the ice as he did last year and and uh, i've had discussions with andrew and and uh things happen like the injuries happen whatnot but he's he's comfortable with with that playing role discussion that we've had so that's what i can report on him his playing role defined his seventh defenseman for no, i wouldn't put any label on it i would just say that he's in that group for the third pair how much of a debate sorry peter was there between having 13 forwards and a 13th forward that's frankly one-dimensional and meaning leon uh, meaning Forwards and eight defense. We got eight D. You've decided only to keep thirteen healthy forwards here right now. Was there a debate about going with the fourteen and seven versus the thirteen and eight? Not really. I I feel I'd rather have, if I had my brothers, which I do, obviously, I'd rather have the two extra D. Just I feel that the D is a is a more significant position. Um, the other thing is like is is when you talk about Slepeshev and Leon, and is that uh, at some point um, Jordan will be back. So, you, you know, you don't really want to put these guys in in a temporary position, and uh, 
And then when Jordan comes back, you have to send them down because you want them playing in a, in a, at a line in a, in a role where they'll succeed. So that's not your question, I know, but it was just more along the lines about the Leon decision. David's shown you enough in the minors that he's an NHL Um, Not in the minors, no. What I've seen up here is I feel that he's one of eight. Um, He'd have to clear waivers. He's like he's. I I, I see a, someone who can skate that has a little physical element to his game. Um, he's you know for me he still has to prove himself to be a full time NHL player. But uh, I like the grit and the skating that he brings, and I think he's uh, he, he's a good complement to our group. Now he doesn't mean he's a full time NHL player, but right now he's on the roster. I, I agree with you. Um, it, it was it wasn't uh, it wasn't easy. It was a, a conversation. I had a conversation, a meeting with him in the summer, and, and asked him to focus on a few things, and he did. And I told him that he, he did everything that we asked him to do. Um, I also told him that we're going to have a competition uh, for the two spots, and uh, I thought I thought he played I thought he played well, and I, I think I agree with you. I think he's a legitimate NHL backup. Um, I just I just. Was, that's part of a competition. You got to. I, I just think what happens now, and you know, there's a slew of players on waivers today. Like it's just you go in, you, the manager, the management group, the coaches. They have a sense of, of, uh, of, of projections on their roster from having spent 20 plus days in camp, and they want to see them through unless there's an injury or something. There were no real injuries. I think Ben will be. Um, at the very least, he'll be depth for us, but I think he'll be somewhere else in, in, at some point. What's your feeling going to minors when you want the swat to play games? Because he's one of your best it's, it's not ideal. It's, it's not ideal. So we'll have to figure something out there. I noticed you were sitting uh, with the owner today. Uh, did, uh, how much balls did it take to put $7 million in the minor leagues? <laughs> well, you know, it was. Something that we said to the players at the opening meeting is that if you're in a spot, we're going to make room. And that was something that uh, I had mentioned to Daryl uh, and to Bob as far as this is a, this is this is this is equity, and this is how you you know. I, I under, listen. I understand there's sometimes when you're constricted by contracts, but this is you know I felt strongly about it, and and it, uh, yeah. You, Ryan, sorry, go ahead. You're Ryan, you're asking. No, I was going to hit on that same okay. point, Sue. Right. When you took over, you mentioned how you didn't really know what you had because you hadn't seen a lot of these guys. How much does the preseason give you an insight, or do you still need to see kind of 20 NHL games to really assess what you have? That's a good question. Like every day at this time or the day before you set a roster, everyone thinks it's your know, roster's written in stone, and it's not. Yeah, we still have to see you know play changes, 10 game segments, 20 game segments. We still have to see what we have here. We have, you know, we're going to have injuries. We're going to have different situations. Um, so yeah, I still have to see what we have and see what, how our guys do against a heavier competition. And do you balance that as far as maybe your plan on how you think to build a winning team or to build a winning team based on what you have? Yeah, well, I mean, that's like, you just can't completely revamp a roster. It's just logistically, it's impossible. And practically, it's, I don't think it's the right way to do, uh, to build a team. Um, so you, you 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 know you find you find where you may have a surplus of things and you may have a deficit of other things and and uh, you look at the chemistry now now we now there's uh, it's going to be a little different chemistry with the new bodies and s some of the subtractions the new coaching staff it's just it's a real fluid it's a real fluid process and and um, this has been a real positive first step this training camp and uh, we made some tough decisions and. Uh, some decisions that are that are best for the long term, medium term, and long term interests of the organization. Uh, when those two young guys get back up on our on our team, you're going to see two terrific players. And I don't know when it is. I've seen these guys. I've seen development happen in a month, two months, three months, a year. But it, 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 with players of, the, of of that skill and that talent, and that it happens. I can guarantee. With Peter, in the past, the Oilers would always help their young players play the draft. You obviously, Connor's. Well, that's a general statement. Like, I just, you do it case by case. I mean, 
there are times when these players are ready and you, and you know that the rules that they can bring will be conducive to development. And, and in my experience uh, with my past team, we had instances where it was the right thing to do. And, and a lot of it had to do with the, with the surrounding cast. Um, so, um, and with both Boston and Ottawa, same thing. I remember bringing, I remember Mike Fisher when he was a 19 year old. So there, there doesn't rule out that. It's just that it depends case by case on, on the player, on where the team is and what the surrounding cast is. So, but I think generally speaking, that that's a pretty sound principle. Peter, just to get back team. to back at the draft that was clearly has struggled for a long time, nine years out of the playoffs. I know it's a short window of your work since you started this job, but starting your first season here on Thursday, are you are you happy with what you've accomplished so far? Is this team ready to look better than it's looked in the past? I think a general manager or coach is never happy with what they have. They always want to get better. Um, I I feel uh, I feel good as that as to what we've accomplished, uh, especially with what the coaching staff has implemented on and off the ice with how some of the players have made some progress in the context of what the structures and put into place. I still have concerns and we still have areas where we have to get better and, and, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel better about the process and, and where we are right now. So Connor McDavid, sorry, you've had a chance to look at him now in his first pro camp, camp's done. Uh, have you seen things in him that you didn't expect to see um not really like he's been he's he's i think he's been one of our best players um he still has things to learn um the other night in vancouver um you know where games the last two games in vancouver where the game gets a little heavier you can see where he's feeling himself out so that's something where uh he will he will get better at um so I like he makes plays. He make he always makes plays. So that's that's he's fun to watch and 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 you know he's receptive to coaching too. So um, as I said, he's I think he's been one of our better players and and uh, you know for an 18 year old it, and that's pretty good. Peter, just to go back to Slepeshev for a, a second, how far <coughs> up your depth chart did he move in the last three weeks? And I just wonder if you can give us a, a specific quality or two about him in the preseason that allowed him. To he was actually fairly high up, and I hadn't seen him. I saw him once his draft year, um, but it, the reports on the, on the on his play last year were quite good. And uh, and when anytime you see a, a 94 born who's six two two eighteen, and you know and, and plays a, a pretty solid brand of pro hockey in the KHL, he had 15 goals or something in the KHL. It's hard to score in that league. You, you, my expectations are actually pretty good coming in. He struggled in uh, Penticton. I don't know how many were in Penticton. He, he was, you could really see him sorting out the, the, the size of the rink and even even the physical play. He wasn't ready for kind of the close confines. He's gotten better. You know, every, every day he's gotten better. Um, you know, he still gets caught up sometimes in situations and that's to be understood. Um, but just, you know, he's... He's he's a he's he's a good player and he's he's he I think he's ready to play. Maybe maybe I might be a little optimistic. Um, and he, he not he's not necessarily here to stay, but he's made the team right now, and uh, he's a pro. Like you can tell, he's played professional hockey and and uh, and can adjust and adapt. What tough is it for your climate to make trades? I mean, like you got Ben going to the minors. You want him to trade him. Nobody's making. Yeah, as I said, at this stage, it's tough. Like everybody's mindset is is like, okay, we've made some plans. You know, here's the lineup, and let's see how it goes. So, it's just tough right now. You might you might see a trade or two between now and the start and the roster um, deadline, which is I guess tomorrow. Um, but it's just everyone's kind of in. Okay, let's let's see how things go now. And, and it's usually the next the trade talk starts after you know, 10, 15 games. How you felt about the roster? What uh, what's fair expectation? Would you say in, in reference to playoffs or how competitive? You I, I just look at. It. I'm going to talk about progress, and and I'm not I'm not a, someone who's going to. I gave a 2020 on Connor. I've been lambasted for it. So uh, 
uh, let's just talk about progress and development, progress and structure. It's the speed of the game, our practices. I, I really like the progress and practices. So maybe after 10 games, we can talk about that. It's bigger than 2020. <laughs> I clarified it was 20 and, and 40. And, he, and uh, originally, I said 20 goals, 20 assists. So maybe I'll go 20 and 40 assists. How's that? for uh, the current waiver wire or is your roster shut down to adding any um i would i would say unlikely but we'll have a look at it there's a bunch of players on today there's a couple that we've that have been on our radar and you know earlier on in the camp but then you see how some of the guys have progressed and i would say unlikely but we'll have a look at it Peter, what's, uh, what's been like uh, as a coach and i know you know him but to see him sort of day-to-day -day and in practices. What, what's he sort of showed you that maybe you didn't know, or is he showing you exactly why are the reasons that you wanted to hire him? Well, one of the things that we uh, we talked about when when we were talking before hiring him was uh, his his communication skills. And, and you know, I figured they were good based on what I had heard and, and what I had seen. But you never know until you're under the same roof. And he, he spoke. He spoke well about them. I was really impressed in camp how he integrated the uh, the minor league coaching staff, and I thought that really created a. And it's it really it started with the development camp, and he said that he wanted to take um, some ownership in the development camp, and and if he's carried it forward to the uh, rookie camp and to this camp, and it really helps the synergy. It really helps the consistent messaging, and it's easier said than done. Uh, because the, often when, once there's a division, it's you can talk until you're blue in the face with the other group. It's just they don't feel like it's been a, there's been a bond. So I was impressed with that. That was that was good. I, I think he really is active on the ice um, during practice. I think the players like that just because it keeps them on their toes. So, but most of the, for the most part, he's you know, he projects well. He's he's done a good, he's done a good job. Everything is advertised. Did I? I had some discussions with some teams, yep. Um, they had a chance to take him on waivers. I think I think with, with Nikitin is that he'll he'll you know, I felt he wasn't in the top eight and he'll he'll go down and he'll uh, get his game back, he'll play and and you know, he's a he is an NHL defenseman, notwithstanding what what everyone's views and perceptions are here. His game isn't quite where it should be. And and he'll get that chance in the minors. Peter, I know the roster is a fluid thing, but to get down to the final 23, how wide a net did you cast? Did you, and maybe how much discussion was there with Todd when it comes to you know making your final decisions? Obviously, with you having the final call. Oh, quite a lot. I mean, I had discussions with our management group, discussions with the coaches, with Todd uh, on a number of different levels, a number of different times. I think it's important to have uh, the coach and his staff involved in the decision. Uh, at the end of the day, it's it's my decision, but I mean, I'd be remiss if I didn't get all the information that I needed and, and their feelings. Because the coach is the one who plays the players, and he'll play whoever I give him. We give him. It's just that he has to. There has to be a level of comfort, um, and there has to be a reason behind certain players. So that's the type of discussion you have. I'm sure this hasn't been lost on you, but uh, a lot of players that uh, aren't here now were players that uh, have been brought in by MACT and House. And was there any com com problem with the comfort level of making those moves? Or, or um, not, no, Terry. It just, it's, it's when you're, you know, you just have to be blunt in your assessment. And those two guys are professionals, and, and they know with a new guy coming in, there's going to be changes personnel-wise, and that's... Uh, that's as it should be. Um, so they, they, they've been good, and we've had frank discussions. They, they see the, the snapshot that I see, uh, and uh, they've been fine with it and give their opinion on it and the opinion that I have to digest and, and, and then move forward and make a decision. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you.